wearing makeup, but my name is Lauren, and today, as the title says, I am doing the Disney Princess book tag. This was created by Turtle Symphony. I wasn't tagged by anyone, but I saw a book utopia do this tag, so I'll link the original and her video down in the doobly-doo. There's a lot of questions, and I have a lot of books to talk about, so let's get to it. Question one, Anna and Elsa, a book involving siblings. I decided to go with The Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony D. Terlizzi and Holly Black. The Grace siblings, which is Jared, Simon, and Mallory. After moving across country to their old family estate, they discover their ancestor Arthur Spiderwick's field guide about fairies. Number two, Rapunzel, a book that made you emotional. And I've been watching a lot of parodies. I found The Hilly Show. I'll link them down in the doobly doo. They are hilarious and they did a lot of Twilight parodies. And so I thought about how New Moon by Stephanie Meyer from the Twilight series made me very, very teary. I know. It's a lame book. There's a lot of problems with this series, but I can't deny how it made me feel. Three, Merida, a book featuring a female warrior. In the Brother Band Chronicles by John Flanagan, starting in book two, The Invaders, we meet Lydia, who is a female huntress turned warrior who joins the Herons. Number four, Tiana, a book that features realistic struggles. I went with The Twelve Kingdoms Sea of Shadow by Fuyumi Ono. This follows the story of Yoko, who is a girl who is trying to fit in. She was born with red hair, which is not common in Japan, and so she's got all these pressures from her parents and from her classmates, and she keeps trying to fit in and is losing herself, and then a man named Kyoki shows up and says she is his empress, and she has to go back to his world to rule. So it doesn't stay realistic, but the beginning, it's very realistic. I really, really connected with Yoko. Number five, Belle, a literary book or a classic. I just finished reading three of these. It's The Complete Sherlock Holmes Treasury by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Talk about classic. Been popular ever since it came out in the 1800s. Six, Pocahontas, a nature book or a book featuring a na naturalist, naturalist, whatever. I don't really have anything like that, but the closest that I could think of is The Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. When Frodo and Sam are going through Mordor, Tolkien talks a lot about how the land is barren and how Sauron has stripping the earth of its natural elements. The sky is super cloudy, filled with smog, and there's tar-filled pits, and there's all this pollution all in Mordor, and the hobbits come from this great, wonderful land of the Shire that's very, very natural and very, very healthy land, and it just kills the hobbits to walk through Mordor, which is so barren and dead. Seven, Jasmine, a book about the desire to be free. There's a lot of books, but I went ahead with A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray, book one of the Gemma Doyle trilogy. Gemma Doyle is sent to an English finishing school and there her and other girls are trying to struggle with the fact that women are so powerless and they are just objects and pawns and schemes of men and they're not allowed to have their own feelings. Least of all, have magical powers to see into the future, like Gemma does. Eight, Mulan, a book featuring war or battles. I'm going with Star Wars The Clone Wars by Karen Travis. Oh my gosh, this is all about the epic war in between episodes two and three. This is before the TV show, but it's about the movie that spawned the TV show. So this is part of the legacy because it features lots of storylines that are completely not canon at all. But I still am enjoying where I'm at. I'm about halfway through it. Talk about war and battle, constant battle. Anakin and Obi-Wan going from one planet to another planet to another planet. Number nine, Ariel, a book featuring curiosity or learning. I went with an odd one. It, it's Demon in My View by Amelia Atwater Rhodes, book two of her Den of Shadows series. This I went with because Jessica is a writer and she has been writing about this character named Damon who shows up at her high school. So, feature school. Number 10, Cinderella, a book featuring manual labor. I'm going back to John Flanagan, but it's his Ranger's Apprentice series, book three, The Icebound Land. Will has been taken captive as a slave and is being worked slowly to death. Number 11, Sleeping Beauty, a book featuring sleep. Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I have a book review for this coming this month, hopefully, so you will get to see what I am talking about, but OMG, Mockingjay. Katniss is unconscious so often, it's painful. 
Number 12, Snow White, a book featuring one or more of the seven deadly sins. In Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa, there are seven characters named after the seven deadly sins. So absolutely featured, yes. And they do, they embody that one sin of whatever they are. There are bonus princesses, so I went ahead and grabbed a book for those. Number 13 is Megra, and it's a book featuring Greek mythology. And I stared at my shelves for a solid minute trying to think of any book that features Greek mythology other than the Percy Jackson or Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan, but I couldn't find one. So I'm going with Lightning Thief. Number 14, Alice, a book that features nonsense or an unusual world. I went with Unusual World and I decided to go with Scrapped Princess. This is A Tale of Destiny by Ichihiro Sakaki. Like Twelve Kingdoms, it's not completed in English and I need to figure out a way to get the rest of this in English because it's so good. But if you've seen the anime, you know how the series ends and I've seen the anime and I know that this world, which seems to be fantasy, isn't. The twist at the end is mind-blowing. Didn't see it at all. Didn't see it all. Can't tell in the books, but this world is very, very unusual. There are some weird characters, and when you find out what's going on, it's just... <sighs> 15 is Maine Marion, a book with a canine. How could I not mention Elf Quest by Wendy and Richard Peeney? This is volume one, Fire and Flights, and it features a canine because it follows Cutter and his tribe of elves, who are the wolf riders who literally bond with and ride wolves. Their forest is burned down, they have to cross this great desert where they find, surprise, more elves, and they thought they were the only ones in the world. So good, so good. I just ordered Final Quest. Can't wait to get it here, can't wait to read it. Homeji. And number 16 is Nala, a book featuring a feline. How could I think of Feline and not go with the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis? How could I not think of Aslan? Alright, that's a lot of books. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more every Friday. It's a book review. I'm working on that. Or at least attempting to get that way. Good luck with your reading and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! involves the spiderwick tr grace <laughs> it. Oh, I sweat. The cat hair. this follows the story of yoko that's her name book two of her i don't even know what it's called didn't have a title back then den of shadows it's not a longer a court time it's a series anywho they may have done it, but I'm just gonna rattle off, um, let's go with, hmm, let's see, uh -huh. um, hmm. I can't stack all of these, there's so many. Let's just do this little grouping in one hand. I'm hugging you in the neck.